It is Carl Brown for Guitar Lessons 365.com, continuing our tribute to the incredible Eddie Van Halen. A little bit newer track. I've been doing a lot of old stuff off of Van Halen 1 and 2, and uh, I'm going to do one of my favorite Sammy era songs here. We're going to do Pound Cake. This one rocks. Now, let me apologize. Got a lot of requests for this one. People wanted me to use a drill. Well, I purchased this cheap thing at Home Depot and it sucks. Um, does not work with this guitar at all. You, you do not want to hear, whenever it comes close to this guitar, the guitar sounds like it's going to explode. Uh, and it's not the same pitch as this drill. I don't know really drill dynamics or uh, uh, how this works, if this drill is shielded. I'm sure there's people out there who are experts on this stuff. I'm not one of them. You guys know what's going on in the intro though. Take a drill, put it in your pickups and hopefully it'll sound decent. For me, sounds like an absolute bomb going off, so I can't use it. So, unfortunately, we're gonna skip that part of it. I tried, I bought a drill for this, didn't work out. Anyway, I, I got about 20 minutes waiting in a return line coming for me later this afternoon. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, now, we're gonna start here, we are in standard tuning, by the way. Actually, before I jump into it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please, and uh, please press the little, ring the little notification bell so you know when I release a new video. And very important, in the description here, you'll see a link to my Guitar Academy. That link will give you a free seven day trial on my Guitar Academy covering all my courses uh, that are, there's many courses in there from complete beginner stuff to uh, courses on technique and improvisation and ear training and theory and guitar tone. So you name it, it's in there. So please go check it out. All right, so let's jump into this great track. This thing just rocks. It's so, it was so fun to just sit there and, and learn it and transcribe it. All right, so we're in standard tuning though. Um, so uh, nothing different there. And we're gonna start with this intro after the drill. Obviously, you know what's going on there. And then we have this. us to the verse. So this is the, pretty much the chorus of the song, well, half of it at least. Um, now I have, basically, if you want to know, I have a, I'm using a, one of his 5150 amp models here uh, in my Line 6 Helix. And so it's kind of cranked up. The drive's only about f f on four. It's just how, many, how much gain those amps have. Um, and there's some chorus on there as well. So that's how you get that kind of sparkly stuff. There's obviously a lot of guitar layers here. Eddie's just got this great, huge driving sound with this really top end of like chorusy stuff that just sounds incredible. Um, so this is kind of approximating that with just one guitar. So we're gonna start here with this E power chord. So that's an open E string, low E, seventh on the A, nine on the D, and nine on the G. And very important here, and this is going to be true for the whole riff, open B and open high E string. So we have this. Then. Now this chord, um, Michael Anthony's kind of keeping the E going there, but so then Eddie goes down to this D and plays the fifth fret there on the A string, seventh on the um, 
the uh, D string and uh, seventh on the G with the open B and high E again. Now, now this one's really cool. So this one is a really interesting way of playing an, uh, a ninth chord. So um, it's actually an add nine chord. So what's going on there? We have the open A string, the uh, seventh fret on the uh, D string, sixth on the on the um, G string, and then the open B and high E again. So we have this. Now, over this, we have some random harmonics, which I'm not going to get too detailed about the harmonics that happen within the chorus. I will within the uh, verse, because it's very, a big part of the sound of the verse. But when, what he is doing for most of the harmonics here, he's doing this, you can, this harmonics here at the fifth fret, at the fifth fret on the high E, down to the B, and then back to the high E, kind of rotating between those two. So that's mostly you can get that sound without even leaving that area, without even well, letting go of that chord. So we have. Now, after you've done that twice, we didn't have this. So that big E chord. Then jump up here and play this D major chord. So this is going to be 12th fret on the D, 11th on the G, 10th on the B. Slide down two frets to the C chord. Then hit that again and then take it to that A add nine chord. Play this. So from there, go down to an A power chord. And we have a couple of this. We're gonna bend up that third fret in the low E. And then that A power chord again, and then back to do the same thing again. And then we have this going right before the vocals. So this couple, of, this is really low in the mix. It's kind of hard to pick up exactly what's going on here, but it's just an open A, I think, twice, and then three, two, zero uh, on the low E. And when you get to that zero, it's really kind of the beginning of the uh, the verse there. So we have this. All right, now for the verse. So first verse. So we're gonna have to cover both verses in detail since the harmonics are different with each one. So and the first verse is a little bit shorter than the second one. So the first verse um, looks like this. So we start with that. So that's a down, up, down, up. And then on the low E, then grab the octave there real quick, the seventh fret there on the A. And then hit the open E again, and then you kill it. Now, I don't know if you guys heard a live version of this on like the right here, right now. It sounds really cool. He lets that ring out, but we'll do it like the album here. Just kill it. And then we have the harmonics. We these first harmonics, so there's going to be four sets of harmonics here. We do the fourth fret harmonic off the low E, and then the fifth fret harmonic on the A and the, the D, and then go back to that fourth fret harmonic on the low E. And then the last harmonic, it's really the third fret, but it's kind of like 3.2 fret. It's in front of the third fret a little bit on the low E. 
So it's not over the third fret, it's a little bit in front of it. So like, oh sorry, it's a 3.2 fret. So we have this, we have. So here. And then back to that riff. And then new harmonics. So those, so the second time you might be writing these down, just the harmonics as I go, since they're might feel kind of random until you get them memorized. Um, so the second group of harmonics in the first verse is that fourth fret harmonic again on the low E. And then the fifth fret on the D, fifth fret on the A, fourth fret on the A, and then back to that 3.3 harmonic or 3.2 harmonic in the low. So we have this. All right, so so far we have this. All right, now continuing, still doing um, the, off the low E riff. And then um, we have these new harmonics, which is this. So that's uh, four on the low E, fourth fret, then five on the A, five on the D, back to five on the A, and back to four on the low E. So that's kind of going straight up across the same harmonics. And back down. And then back to the riff again. And then the last one's to end the first verse. So that is gonna be the fifth fret harmonic on the D, and then the G, then the seventh fret harmonic on the B string, and then the twelfth fret harmonic on the high E, and the B. And then we're to chorus, uh, the first chorus, which sounds like this. All right, so that uh, had a little ending there. So we're starting with that same riff twice. That we did in the intro. Now we have this little fill. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the open G string and then do a bar dive, right? And then as it come, as you let the, release the bar dive, place your finger there at the fifth fret over the fifth fret harmonic. So, so you don't have to actually pick it or anything. And then we have this to end it there. So that's just, and then you can start with the open A string and then you have this kind of hammer on five, pull off to the open. Back to the five, back to the open. And then hammer on four, pull off to the open. Then hammer on two. And then that takes us to um, verse number two. Now, verse number two is a little bit longer in different harmonics. And we go from the E to the A2 in there, and then back to the E. So it looks like this. So then from that one right there, so we start with that same E riff. And then the harmonics here are um, gonna be the fourth fret on the low E. So we're in the second, first set of harmonics for verse number two. So that's fourth fret on the low E, fifth fret on the D, fifth fret on the A, fourth fret on the uh, low E, and that 3.3 on the low E. So I have this. One. 
All right, and now we go back to that E riff. And then we have the next set of harmonics. The second set for verse two is fourth fret on the low E, fifth fret on the A, fifth fret on the D, fourth fret on the D, on the, sorry, on the A string, and then the third fret on the low E, third 3.2. All right, so those are the two E riffs in verse two. All right, now we take the same thing down a string and we do the riff off the A. So we have that little, instead of the low E, it's an open A. And then the octave of that is the seventh fret on the D, and then back to the open A. So same riff, but just one string lower. Kill it. And then we have new harmonics here. So that's a harmonic at the fourth fret on the A string, fifth fret on the G string twice, then the fourth fret on the D, and then that kind of 3.2 or 3.3 on the A string. Back to the A riff again. And the fourth set of harmonics, there's just three of them here. He plays this. And that's that ring, so in a little vibrato bar. So we have this little um, fourth fret on the A, fifth fret on the D, and the G. Let that ring. So, so we have this so far for verse number two. Then we go back to the E riff now. And the next set of harmonics, so this is the, uh, um, the fifth set of harmonics for verse two. So like I said, it's a little bit longer. So that's the fourth fret on the A, fifth fret on the D, fifth fret on the A, fourth fret on the uh, low E, and that 3.3 on the low E. So this. And then the last set of harmonics after the E riff again, to end the uh, verse number two, is just the uh, four on the low E, five on the D, five on the A, um, four on the low E, and then 3.3. All right, now that takes us to the first pre-chorus. I say the first pre-chorus because it's kind of the second pre-chorus is the same riff as the first one, just a step higher, um, a whole step higher. All right, but the first one, so first pre-chorus, this one really rocks too. It sounds like this. All right, so we have this power chord at the second fret of the, of the A string, B power chord. Then we, we're gonna do real quick is go open A string, second fret on the A. So just a little quick palm muted bass line. Then take that up to the third fret power chord. Then down to the uh, third fret of the power chord off the low E. Then the fifth fret power chord off the A string. And then the fifth fret power chord of the low E string. So it is. And then we have this little turnaround riff that takes us back to the beginning of the riff. And that's just zero, two, three, five. Heavily palmed on the low E. Start over. So we have this. Now it's pretty much the same thing from there. I can get back to that B. Except here, the second time through the riff, instead of doing this, you come up here and you grab one of Eddie's favorite chords, which was this uh, sus fork shape. So that's a D here. We're still playing a D major chord, basically. And you're gonna add the eighth fret there on the B string, and then resolve it back to 
that D major. So we have this all together. So the first time through is just like this. First time through. Go back to that same little transition riff. Then back to the B chord to start over. Now this is played the, like we did the first time with just the power chord. Alright, now transition again. Then we get to that B. So the fourth time we get that B, just move it up one fret to the C chord. Just down up, down up. Down up, down up, killing it between each one. All right, so that's probably my favorite riff in the song. Is that that, that well? Both of the pre-choruses are they really really fun to play. All right, so um, then we have chorus number two. So uh, oh, well, the second time you hear the chorus, you basically this one's a little different because we play this chorus riff twice, and then we go into this kind of jamming thing with a wah pedal, which I don't have a wah pedal hooked up here, so. You won't hear a wah, but it sounds like this. leads us into the solo. So now what I did there is I played it the same riff twice and then I did this little fill. So it was kind of like we did before where we did this little bar dive on the G and then but what he does on the way back you're gonna put your finger instead of the fifth fret you put it at about the 2.3 <laughs> fret so about a third of the way up in the fret uh, uh, on the G string there, in front of the fret. So. And that's how you get that little harmonic he gets there. Then he goes in that, he kicks in the wah pedal and does that. So what's going on there? So we're going to start with just, this is just on the D and the G string, the whole thing. So we're playing the 12, the 14th fret there on the D and the 14th fret on the G. And you can pick those and slide up to 16. Then back down to the 12th fret on the D and the G. Back to the 14. Wait this. Slide down to nine. Same, playing those double stops. Now here, that's kind of hammering the ninth, the hammering, I know, it sounds like a hammer to me. So you're playing the ninth fret now on the, uh, I'm sorry, the seventh fret on the D and the G, and hammer on the uh, D and the G on the ninth fret there. And then pick it again, slide up to 12, so this. Then it kind of starts again. Now here, second time that we have this. So just take it, hit it a couple times, slide it down to seven, and then down to five. So we're so far we have this. Remember there's a wah pedal with this, which I don't have hooked up. Then repeat. Now the fourth time through, we have this. So that's just doing that. Starts the riff the same. We do that 12 to 14, then take it back up to 16. And hold it for Eddie's solo. 
All right, so let me uh, play through Eddie's solo real quick for you. Um, like, there's also some little drill bits in here. You, you, hey, that makes sense. That's a that's a good pun. Um, so there's some he uses a drill coming in with it. Obviously, I don't have that, but he's actually doing some stuff on the guitar with it too. So like, kind of match. So we can kind of match it up a little bit, doing doing some bends there instead of the the drill stuff. But um, You'll get it on me when you hear it. So I'm gonna play through the uh, solo for you real quick and then I'll show you how to play it phrase by phrase. Some awesome stuff in there. So um, we're gonna start with this. Uh, it's a little bit intricate here with these tapped harmonics. We're gonna start with first a pitch harmonic, a standard pitch harmonic at the fourth fret on the G string. So bend that up a whole step, and with a pinch harmonic. And then you go over and do a bend at the fifth fret on the. Now wait, actually. You can actually do the bend as like a hammer on from nowhere, like hammer on the fifth fret on the A string, on, on the B string, and then bend it up. And that gives you time to kind of reach over, and so you can do the tap. So, so then, now here's what's going on when you get to this. You're it's basically built all around this fifth fret note, bent or, or otherwise. After you get that bent up. You tap it at the tenth fret, so basically five frets higher on the B string. So at that, and then you release it. Then you tap it at the twelfth fret. So it's 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 going to now do that. The harmonic, uh, and then you bend it back up. So it does. So you basically have it pre-bent, or you, you bent it up, tap, tap five frets higher, release, then tap seven frets higher, bend it back up, and then tap it again. This kind of stuff is harder to do slow than it is fast. It's so weird. Then here, you have this other tap. So when you bent it back up, then you tap it there at the 10th fret when it's bent again. Um, then you do another hammer on, so this one's not. You just hear the note natural without a harmonic in. And then, so you hear that again, so you're gonna have to hammer on again. Tap it when it's bent at the 5th, 10th fret. Release, and then the final tap is at that 12th fret there on the B. You should let it ring. So we have this pinch harmonic there to start with the G string, then go over. Hammer on from nowhere, and tap the 10th fret, release, tap this 12th, bend it back up and tap it. Then another hammer on from nowhere on the B string. Tap again at the 10th fret, release, and then tap at the 12th. All right, so it's a little, to get it exactly like the recording like that, it's you gotta get to that entry. I don't think he cared too much when he was doing it live if he did it exactly like the recording. He would do something similar, but um, you know, it's he's just probably just going off between those two frets, um, tapping those two frets. And then we have this. So we had that lick done a couple times. So what's that? He's, he's tapping the seventh fret, pull off the two. Hammer on to five. Easy enough. And then tap on five, I mean seven, pull off to five, and then bend it up. And do it again.
So this is the second one's kind of like a ghost note. All right, now from there, it's kind of some standard Eddie tapping loops. So you can kind of just do the standard tapping pattern, just seven, pull off to two, whenever five, pull back off. But he throws a little thing extra in there, slides it down to one, and then back up to two. So you do that a little while, just have fun with it. Then you do a hand run from nowhere to fourth fret there on the uh, G string. Tap seven on the G. And then release. Let's play this. So. Some cool stuff. And then we have this. So um, that's going to be a, kind of a slow bend up at the fourth fret on the G string, kind of uh, muted. Release it. Kind of, then another bend there, pull off to two, then two four D. All right, and then we come up here and do this. Now here it's kind of like, there's a little bit of a drill thing going on there, so it's kind of hard to get it like it. Um, and, and for me, I have to use the, I can't do it all with this guitar. It's really, you gotta use some of the bar to help you here on this, to kind of pull it back. So we have this. So we had this 14, 17, pull back off to 14, all the beat. Big bend there. A two step bend. And then you pull off to 14 there, and then we're at the, um, over to the 16th fret there on the G, bend, release, pull off to 14. So you do that a few times. So we. And then right here, it's kind of weird. So what he's doing, he's doing this, he's doing a bend and he's helping it with the bar. And that allows him to grab the 16th fret, which is already bent on the G string. It's, it's not the easiest thing. Uh, and this is when the drill's going on too. So it's kind of, it could be the drill, whatever. So we have this bend up. And then pick the 16th fret there on the G, release, down to 14, and then do that again. It's actually meant to sound crazy like that, so don't worry about it if it sounds like, wow, it's, 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 he's doing drill stuff with it. All right, and then we have this. So we have this. So that's a slide into 14 on the B, over to 14 on high E, back to that 14, and then on the B, and then some bends there at the 17th fret there on the high E. And then uh, 14 on the high E to the B, bend and release at the 16 on the G, pull off to 14, back to the 16. Then we have this. So that's sliding in to the 18th fret there on the G. Over to the 17th fret now on the high E. Back to the 17th on B. And then... So there's some bends at the 19th. 
Then 1719 over to 19 on the B. And that's a step and a half bend there. And then we have this cool little descending line. So that's a, a sliding into a bend, which is always fun. So it's a bend at the 17th fret on the B string. And then you're going to play 17 on the high, 17 on the B, then 14 on the high E and the B. Then play 17 on the B string, 16 on the G, then 14 on the B, 14 on the G. Then 16 on the G, 16 on the D, then 14 on the G, 14 on the D, and end it on that 16 on the D. And then we're going to end it with this. Uh, not the end, but the, in this little section. So with. So that kind of 14 was um, on the B to the high E to, to the B again. A bend at the 17th. Release. Pull off to 14. Back to that 17. And then over the 17th on the B string. And then it sounds like this is when the drill comes back. So pull back on the bar while you're doing a bend. Just make it sound crazy. And they end it with a bend. From there, we have some uh, unison bends. So that's uh, 10th fret on the B and 12th fret on the G. So pick those together and bend the one on the G string up a whole step until it matches the note on the B string. It's a unison bend. Take it then up two frets and do the same thing. And then we're back to that fourth fret there on the uh, G, kind of really digging in and bending up. Release, pull off the two, over to four on the D. And then back to the unison bends, except this time it's at the 10th fret, and then the 14th. And then we have some tapping, so that sounds like this. All right, so that's that bit unison at the 10 and then 14. And then we have this. So I'm tapping 19 here on the B, pull off to 14, hammer on 17. And then do the same thing on the high E. So we have this. Let's repeat that. And at the very end, it sounds like he kind of does a little bit of like a trill tapping. This is it's not the pattern that he uses. And then, kind of, so we do whatever, kind of whatever you want. I kind of just like that whole roll that note. And then abandon the uh, 19th fret on the high E string to end the solo. So really cool solo, I guess, and really kind of tricky stuff with all the tap harmonics to get them just right and then some crazy stuff with the drill so we don't want to talk about that because uh, my drill sucks sorry drill you're not very good all right then from there we go to the pre-chorus number two so this is when we move the previous really rocking pre-chorus we're going to move it up a little bit uh sounds like this So, um, so it's basically the same riff, just two frets higher. So we're going to start with a 
power cord here at the fourth fret uh, off the A string. Then play two, four. Then you'll mute it. And then we're going to do those sequence of power chords at the fifth fret on the A. Fifth fret on the low E. Seventh fret of the A. And seventh fret of the low E string. Now the little transition riff is also two frets higher. So we have this. So two. Um, sorry, two, four. So I like pick that, shift up to the fourth fret, and play five, seven. So this. Just like in the first pre-chorus, the second time through the riff, instead of going, we're going to take that E sus4 chord, so that's the ninth fret here, we're going to play in the uh, 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 seventh fret, seven on the A, and a full E major chord, ninth fret on the D, G, and the B, but you're going to have it as a sus4 first, you're going to have the tenth fret there on the, on the uh, B string, and then resolve it, so it is. Transition, and then back to the first way. And then the transition. All right, so all together for that. And then we have this little, uh, it's on a clean setting, which. So that is, you're gonna wanna hold like a B sus4 chord again. So, uh, so you really don't need the notes on the A string here at first. So I'm just barring across the fourth fret on the D, G, and the B, and then have the fifth fret there on the, on the uh, B string. So you pick that fifth fret on the B, then pick it up and pick the B string, G, D. And then pick the B string again, and then the D on the G string. The, and then we have the fifth fret on the B again. Then you're gonna pick the fourth fret on the B, hammer on that fifth, pull back off. Over to four on the G, but A major chord. Then the chorus. This chorus is a little different. It actually plays that main riff three times. This last chorus ends with a back to the same first fill that bar dive with the G, and then it's the, the harmonic of the fifth fret. So after this kind of fifth fret harmonic there, we go into that jam part. So you play that chorus riff three times, and we go into the jam part. It's the same as the first one, except you add some harmonics. Some of them are overdubs. Um, but there is one that you can do um, that he also does live too. So uh, I'll do that one. So it sounds like this. Uh, so that's just uh, that little harmonic I did. It's a bend of the 7th fret on the G. Tap this 12th fret so it's 5 frets higher. And then tap the 7th on the, well, the 7th fret's higher, the 14th fret there on the G. And then back to the 5th. 
And then it gets basically the outro, so I'm not going to cover because it's kind of underneath. Sammy's doing his thing. It's lower in the mix, but all you really have to do is a kind of E minor pentatonic. And some chromatic. Kind of fades out there. So all I'm really doing is just I'm just gonna, like, this one's kind of low in the mix, so it's kind of hard to get exactly right anyway. So I just kind of I'm just messing around with some E minor pentatonic chord. Sorry. Sorry. To the beginning, and then into some mid, and then play second fret, and then just kind of climb up the E minor pentatonic. That bend. And you'll hear him do some slides. That's into the, into the 21st fret on the G. And then uh, I know it's flying through this one because I'm just not trying to get it too note for note. I'm just kind of giving you an idea of what he's doing so you can kind of do your own thing with it. Then he does a bend in the 15th. Then, and then some little chromatics kind of descending. Half chromatic. First two strings. And then more to the slides. Same thing. And then it, That's really the last thing you hear. Uh, he's um bending he's doing a slide into a bend at the 22nd fret of the beach. It gets really low, uh, kind of after that. And, but anyway, so it's just E minor pentatonic. You can do what you want with it, or you can do something similar to what I just did there. Um, but it's uh, kind of just uh, it's underneath all the vocals, so it's kind of hard to pick up anyway. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of uh, Pound Cake. It's one of my favorite Van Halen songs. It just absolutely rocks, and um, it's really fun to play. All right, so um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, you know we're gonna keep cranking out some more Eddie for you. Uh, to honor him so you know generations can remember his music and learn how to play it and learn from the master himself all right so uh i'm talking about eddie not me i'm no <laughs> don't want you to misconstrue that comment learn from eddie you gotta learn how to do it from eddie all right so anyway uh, i'll see you guys again soon bye-bye